Hey, let's get us a hymn book. Turn to the number 144. Number 144. Let us stand. Sing together. 144. A silent night. Oh.
stand to our feet. The choir is going to come down and join you. Let's take this time to shake hands with those around us, all right? seats and we'll move along with the service and I knew it when he said it I got nervous heard my preacher hey it's my anniversary but I guarantee you I know where I'm gonna be Tuesday night and the flu bug got him man I tell you what it got him bad it's, it's been on Miss Jennifer for a while they both went to the doctor Monday and the doctor told Mrs. White well you're about halfway through with it I can't give you anything it's just gonna have to run its course but for you, Mr. White, here's some, uh, here's some antibiotics and everything. And so he's on that stuff high right now. So he's enjoying it. He's not enjoying being sick, but the medication's working, so they're not here. Trust me, they're not at the restaurant celebrating their anniversary. I promise you, okay? But uh, we do miss him, and we'll try to move ahead while he's not here. Let me give you a few things to uh, pray about and just some announcements. I don't see the Bottoms family here, do I? Anybody? Olivia, nobody? But, but Rita had requested prayer requests. I saw Ronnie the other day, and I don't know if you heard about that car accident on Box Mountain, I think, on f Friday afternoon, Saturday-ish? I, I, what's today? Today's Tuesday? Okay. So that accident was Sunday. I was at Ronnie's yesterday. And uh, that's, of course, Rita's aunt and uncle that were driving the vehicle. I think Ronnie's sister. Is that correct? And uh, those two, are they were at Baptist all day and still recovering. And then there was uh, one of their children was in the car, and they uh, passed away. It was his sister passed away and so there was a death involved in that accident so um, I tried to put it in my phone I, I think it's Goss Gosnell right old Apple corrected and put gospel I appreciate that that it's using words I've typed probably before but it's the Gosnell family so keep them in your prayers if you would and of course keep preacher and Mrs. White in your prayers I think grandma and grandpa picked up the kids today brought them here and they're keeping them away from mom and dad hopefully I think and uh, so you pray for brother John and Miss Jennifer that they recover then this note here says a baby shower for Noah and Heather's baby boy and that's a miracle in waiting and so we're we're excited for that. It'll be on Sunday, January 4th from 5 to 545 in the Fellowship Building. They're registered at Target, Walmart, Babies R Us, Gander Mountain, um, uh, Bass Pro Shop, uh, all those other. What, anything else, Noah? Does that pretty much cover it? Carhartt and uh, what is that? And a guitar shop. Yeah, yeah. So he said the baby might like Guitar Hero for his Xbox, I think he said. Uh, anyway, so, so, so be in prayer for that. Then these announcements, Saturday morning visitation will be at 10 o'clock a.m. And then the Young at Heart will have a fellowship after the evening service on Sunday, December 28th. It says, ladies, please bring a dessert. And then pastor's prayer team meeting will be Sunday night after the evening service. 
And I think that's everything. Ushers, if you can come forward, can we take our offering now, please? We'll go ahead and get ready for that. Uh, happy birthdays, Robert Bullinger, Lester Culler. Man, alive. Did you guys plan that? That's amazing. And uh, so good for you. And Austin Pardue. Austin, are you here tonight? And uh, he's got the flu. Well, get in line. And uh, Chris, good to see you and Ashlyn here. The Hutchins family, there's five in their family. All four of them had it. And uh, they were all down for about seven to ten days, and Alec just got out of house and worked as much as he could to stay away. But good to see you two here. Let's continue to pray for them. But just pray for that flu, bug, whatever it is going around, and uh, we'll ask the Lord to get us through that, all right? Do we need one more? We need plates. That'd be good. That'd be real good. And uh, thank you. God bless you, Brother Barry. Amen. And I'm, I've got it. I've got it right here, brother. Man. I know the JV's here for the varsity, but I've got, I've got it all written down. I'll, we'll get through it. We'll get through it. And extra treats are available um, if you'd like to pick one up. Maybe you weren't here Sunday night or you failed to receive one. Feel free to grab one in the vestibule on your way out. And I think that's everything. Let me check. <laughs> all right. I think we can move along with the service. And... Uh, Y'all tell preacher, it just went smooth, preacher. Yeah, yeah, it was fine. But uh, let's ask the Lord's blessing for the offering, and then uh, we'll give as the Lord has blessed. Justin, why don't you go ahead and pray for us? Sure, I'm proud of you. Let me just brag on Justin. He's in my Sunday school class, but I've seen him mature as a young husband and a father and being busy at work but still taking time and then trying to have a burden here he said brother Clint, i think i'm going to get my b passenger license to help with the buses and be a driver here and there and and uh, you know just proud because i don't mean this but our younger generations we're going to have to learn to take over some of these spots that some of you have been doing for decades and we're grateful you've done it for decades and we're not pushing you out but uh, i am proud of him and many like i could talk about Drew, talk about other than Nathan and all that. So anyway, but proud of you, buddy. Why don't you pray for our son, uh, Sunday, Tuesday, Tuesday evening offering as we uh, get ready to give and move along with the service. Justin? We love you. We thank you for another time we come back to your house to Lord. We thank you for this season and what it means to Lord. We thank you for sending your son. God, ask that you just help us to take a moment and get out of the busyness of, of the season and just remember the true reason, dear Lord. And I ask that you just be with all the prayer requests. There's many sick, dear Lord, and there's many that have lost loved ones during this time, dear Lord. And no doubt that this season's just going to be a little bit more empty for them than it's ever been. And I ask that you just touch and move in those as only you can, dear Lord. And we ask that you be with the remainder of the service, be with Brother Clint as he stands, bring some message and help us to have receptive hearts. And I ask that you be with this offering, bless the gift and the giver. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.
and get going again preacher regrets not being here he thought he'd cough his way through the service and it'd be a bother to y'all so again pray for him as he gets well it's been a great year at freedom baptist church as we conclude the year 2014 and christmas just right down the road here in a few days i was just thinking in my office this afternoon i was just kind of rejoicing do you remember all that went on in 2014 at freedom baptist church just at our church Okay, so think about the first Sunday, we handed out the calendar, and uh, you were happy this year because it didn't have the picture of Brother and Mrs. Fredericks on it, had the picture of the auditorium, and we gave you new coffee mugs, and, but, but just thinking through, I wrote here, Miss Amanda helped us with Sanctity of Life Sunday, then we had that Wild Meat Men's Fellowship of Brother Harold Fletcher, and he preached on the blessed man. Psalm chapter 1, and uh, talked about influence and how a, a, uh, a uh, Sunday school teacher influenced D.L. Moody, and D.L. Moody influenced, I forgot the order he put it, but he got to Billy Graham, and then he started talking about when Brother Fletcher was a teenage boy and heard Billy Graham preach, and all because this guy influenced Moody, and Moody influenced this guy, and this guy influenced Billy Graham, and he says, and I've been preaching now for, I think he said 50-something years. We got to be a part of that service. We had Public Servant Day where almost 70 uh, firefighters, EMT, first responders, sheriff, police, all that came for us on a Sunday. We had our first couples retreat. Now, those of you who came, I, you know we were blessed. Some of you didn't want to sign up. You thought we'd sit you down in a chair and do counseling. And so what do you think about when you, boy, you were, I ain't going to a couples retreat. I don't need any of that. But man, those of us who did go, we went up to Hendersonville. Uh, I think the Wilsons, you were the ones who were the couple that was married the longest, right? How many years? 49 years, all right? And you know what they said? This was good. We were helped. 49 years and they were still helped. Hey, I, w I was only 18 years at the time, but I was helped. And Preacher had just stressed out. He was helped meeting Brother Bob Hooker and his wife and the great job they did at our couples retreat. Teenagers, we had our ski retreat. Then the ladies' conference. Zena got me. I don't know why I agreed to it. I came dressed as a mama, and we had that little skit. And just, man, I keep kicking myself thinking, what was I doing? The church directory photos. 
Isn't that a great family function to get together for? <laughs> I have to wear what color? Why do we all have to match? <laughs> then they give you 27 pictures to choose from. You're like, no, I don't like that one. 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 Don't like, really don't like that one. Don't like that one. Oh, my goodness. Throw that in the trash. Okay, nope, no. Uh, can we take another one? No, I'm sorry. We got to stay on schedule. You got to choose one of those. <laughs> Church directory photos. I'm surprised we didn't have a church split over that. <laughs> Brother Mike Prim got rid of two daughters. He married them off this past year, right? Lucky guy. He gained two sons-in-law. Resurrection Sunday. Our youth rally with Randy Dignan and Sheridan Cook. Uh, their family started coming around that time. Sheridan came down, I think, on Thursday night. And my wife was able to take the Bible and lead her to Christ. Mother's Day. Y'all remember Mother's Day in the video the teenagers put together for you? We played it for you, and it was, hi, Mom. Hi, Mom. Hey, Mama. Hey, Mother. Hello. And then we read Proverbs 31 and tried to be a blessing to you. Then not only Mother's Day, the mother-daughter luncheon, junior camp brother Daryl, Miss Melissa. That's, I, I love junior camp, having them kids just show up. And, you know, we're, we're almost doing reruns of a few games. Brother Daryl does a good job of coming up with new stuff. But these kids look at, whoa. Yeah. And then we had a great week. The teenagers helped out with that. And then I was dumb enough. After Friday, I said, junior camp's not enough. We're doing a teen all-nighter. You remember the all-nighter we did, teens? And you're like, oh, how long are we going to go for it, Brother Clinton? Let's go, man. By 3 o'clock, you guys are... And I'm like, hey, remember you were making fun of the old man? Come on, wake up. Let's go. Let's go. We had a good time this year. We had those tour groups show up one Sunday a month for three months in the summer. I guess when we planned it, we just said, yeah, we'll do it, see what happens. But to see God work in Charlie and Amanda's life, to know that over a period of time, God was speaking to Charlie about something, about serving the Lord. And Amanda was, was uh, uh, faithful at UNCG, and the Lord, you were speaking to your heart about something, and y'all just couldn't find the right time to tell each other about what God was doing. We wanted to, but, and then they finally spilled the beans to each other. No, you tell me. No, you tell me. No, you tell me. And then all you know, that next Sunday night, Crown College, their tour group came in here, sang, presented their work. And then it aroused, piqued their arousal, and now they've spent one semester at Bible college to see God orchestrate that. What a coincidence. What a work of God to see he did at Freedom Baptist Church and encouraged others about thinking about Bible college. Teen camp. You can't describe Thursday night at teen camp. Brother Steve Cox preached and brought one of his boys with him. They call him Big Red. He's about six foot three or four, and he plays the piano and sings, and Brother Steve got done preaching, and we had the altar call start, and, oh, I don't know, maybe 45 minutes, we thought we were ready to shut her down, and then another hour, about an hour and 15 minutes of people just praying and testifying and thanking God, and just, whoo, I can't really adequately explain what happened that night, but God met with us teenagers, and you know that. Vacation Bible School. Miss Martha, am I right? A record attendance. We kept adding the numbers, adding the numbers, and I was double-checking. Well, let's not get too fast. I thought we only had this many, and she was just, see, I was right. You were right, Miss Martha, and I was wrong. Good job on that. Our teens took the July journey to Atlanta and came back all in one piece. We brought the Holy Roller here, huh? That big monster truck. I think some of you men enjoyed that more than the young people we were bringing it for. Boy, you wanted to smell that. At least I did. I like smelling that fuel. Brother Jeff, you were making fun of me. I said, that smells like Kool-Aid. I wouldn't smell too much of that if I were you. But I was just behind that. Ah, yeah, yeah. Ah, yeah, yeah. And uh, that was a great time. Camp meeting with Brother Jenkins and the Vasek family. And what God did during that week. Craftsmen for Christ, our Baby Day Parade, Missions Conference, the Thanksgiving meal for the bus ministry, our Christmas joy tree that we do here at Freedom Baptist Church, being able to help several folks and individuals, widow's banquet, deacon's banquet, rest home ministry lunch, all the class Christmas parties, good night, December, you call Carla and try to find a new date, you ain't going to find one because this class and that class and that class and this class and then we're all having Christmas parties to end up the, new, the year. The children's program, the Christmas cantata, and Preacher White's 20th wedding anniversary with them homesick together. How romantic. <laughs> it's been a great year, church. We've been blessed. You know, if I were to ask you something real quick and just do this, let's see if we could do this right here. Watch this. 
Here comes my artistic abilities coming through right here, okay? Now, don't sit in too much in awe, but let's see if all of you can see that. Can you see that? Brother Forrest, how you doing? Did you? Oh, good job. What'd you say? A dot. That's right, a dot. I thought dot was a one-syllable word, but then we moved to North Carolina. <laughs> dot. <laughs> Don't you dare point that finger. All right, let's see how well this goes. Now what do we see? Whoo! That ought to be worth something, but it ain't. All right, I'm working. Whew. Woo! This will not be displayed at the Dixie Classic Fair, I guarantee you. It's not that bad, come on. Now, you know what the crazy thing is? I gave you three opportunities. Nobody said the white piece of paper. We immediately said the dot. Oh, three dots. Oh, look at that. An unhappy face. Nobody said anything about the piece of paper. You know, it's sad enough as great of a year it's been at Freedom Baptist Church. Some people will choose not to remember it for any of those activities and the scores of others we can think of. Someone's going to go, remember vacation Bible school? That air conditioning unit wasn't working. Do you remember how hot it was in that classroom? <sighs> remember when the church gave us some Bojangle cards? <laughs> I went to Bojangle, swiped it. Yeah, insufficient funds. Yeah, I tell you what. <laughs> Those are people who see the dot. Those are people who see all oh, three dots. They don't see the piece of paper. If we were to talk about the ladies' fellowships this year, my wife is, I can only go off of what she told me. And she said four out of six ain't bad. No, I'm teasing, I'm teasing. She said they were great, the new structure. She mentioned the time schedule. She just loved it. The teen choir able to travel six times out of Wednesday night services to be a blessing to others. Monday night visitation, Saturday visitation, the salvations and baptisms, the church members joining. I could almost sense the other night, I think the Tuckers were the most recent Someone kind of going, another family joining? What do you mean, another family? Do you just see the dot? That's the piece of paper getting bigger and bigger and bigger. It's been a great year. And I'm looking forward to an even better 2015 if the Lord will tarry. But as our preacher mentioned, we're going to have to work together. We're going to have to all go the same way, same mind, same spirit. I pray we can do that. This evening, I'll not be long. I know if Pastor was here, his goal and desire would to be a quick service, not just to get us out, but to be concise to the point where we're at. I'm going to need some helpers here for a second. Let's see. Uh, hi, ladies. Good to have you back from college. Two, four, I'll tell you what, you're from college. I'll just use you five ladies, okay? One, two, three, four, five. Oh, what wonder if y'all could see their faces right now. It's great. Come on up, ladies. All right. Take your time. Yeah, just pretend like you've never walked on a platform before. And uh, all right. Okay, this works out. Caitlin, you stay right there. And ladies, you stay right here, okay? Now, let's think real quick. Okay, let's say Caitlin or her mama sent out invitations that today was Caitlin's birthday. All right, and uh, so if it was, uh, you girls all got invitations to the birthday. All right, now would you want to go to the birthday party? You do? Well, that's not what you told me the other day when you said Caitlin was. No, I'm just, she never talked to me about that. She did send my wife a text message. No, I'm just joking. But, but okay, yeah, you want to go, you want to go. Okay, so are you ready to go? Can we go to the party now? You want to go? You want to go? Yeah, you want to go? You want to go? What, what, what's, what's that look for? Whoa. We don't have any presents. Yeah. 
Got to go to the party. We got to bring some presents. All right. Well, I'm glad you mentioned that. Stay right there, ladies. We got some presents for you. And uh, let's see what we got in here. Oh, wow. Okay. Here you go. Take one of these. Uh, ladies, y'all take one of those. Let's see. How many presents do I need total? Four? All right, good. We'll get four presents in right here. They don't open them. Remember, they're not for you. That's for you. There. Now you have presents, right? Now, let me get back through here. Now we can go to the party, right? You don't want to go to a birthday party and not bring the... And she doesn't want to have a birthday party if they're not bringing presents. <laughs> right? Oh, or food. Yeah, food. Caitlin's got a love affair with food. I think her motto is, with pizza in crust we trust. Is that correct? Yeah, okay. So, so if we're going to the birthday party, we got to bring presents, right? So if we come to the party, let's not pet them, but, but these are for you. Let's just set them right there for now so you would give them. And these are all for you, right? Yay, we're all happy, okay? Good. All right, you can go back over there, ladies. No, yeah, stay here. Yeah, we're having fun, right? And uh, smile. You're on the internet. <laughs> millions, millions of millions of people looking at you right now, all right? Caitlin's single, and uh, she's currently in high school, though, so uh, she likes long walks and cornfields and uh, anything else? Pizza. All right. So we brought the gifts. She got the gifts. Now, I don't know about you. You like receiving gifts, don't you? Isn't that awesome? I, I think really, though, the older I get, the less I really like receiving gifts. I don't mean that in a bad way. I'm not saying I'm ungrateful, but Brother Frankie, I think maybe when we became parents, something changed that Oh, yeah, thanks, thanks. But we really can't wait to watch them open the gift and see their expression. Daniel, I don't know if you've experienced that yet with Genevieve with the moment yet, if she's at that age. But Justin, I think you know Mason's probably gone through that. But you know, and so now it changes. It used to be, oh, here's your present. We can't wait to get, but now we can't wait to give. But you know, something happens in between those to where when we give these gifts, we're kind of like, oh man, I forgot about Caitlin's party. I have to go go by and get a gift. And so what do we do nowadays? Let's be honest. If y'all were to go to a party, none of you are bringing that many gifts. If there's that many gifts, I'd be shocked. But I'll tell you what there'd be a lot of. What? Gift cards. Well, you know, it'd be better if I just give her this gift card so she can get what she wants. Right? Well, if we were good friends, wouldn't we know what she wants? Now, watch this. Let's go back here. Come back here and get your presents, girls. Go back and get the presents. Now, they gave all the presents to Caitlin, right? Okay, now, watch this. Caitlin, go stand over there. Okay, girls, here we go. Hey, are you girls here for the party? For Caitlin's party? Good, all right, good. Glad you're here. Well, Caitlin's over there, but here we go. Let's take your present, and you can give it to Megan. And we'll give Megan's present to Savannah, and we'll give Savannah's present to Tiffany, and we'll give Tiffany's presents to Haley, and woohoo! yeah! All right, now we can go home, right? Ladies, if you could place those gifts on the front of that pew. And then you can be seated. How's that? You can go be seated. Now, we gave two illustrations there. Again, I loved receiving gifts. I remember as a kid, there's two gifts that stick out in my mind. I don't know why. It wasn't a football. It wasn't this. And I, know, and I wasn't saved, so I'm not glorifying the flesh here. But I remember, I think it was 1979 or 1980 or 81, something in there. I got a brand new album. Um, Y'all know what a CD is? Okay, it's like, a, it's like a CD on steroids. That's what an album <laughs> is. It's big. And I got the Styx. Styx Paradise album. And not only did I like the, the group Styx, but on the back of their record, you could kind of move it like that and shimmy it. And there was a, a rainbow insignia on the record. And it had its logo and all that. And I remember, yeah, I like the band. Uh, I remember putting on the record player and playing it again and again and then moving it back and hearing the song play again. I was so excited to get that. But you know what the set, Brother Jeff, you're not going to believe this, but you're going to kind of like it. The second gift I remember getting as a kid was at a birthday party. Someone had gotten me a model, a red and white 18-wheeler. 
because my favorite show at the time was BJ and the Bear. <laughs> BJ McKay and my best friend Bear. And I remember always wanting, what are you laughing to, our brother Jeff? And I think it was a Kenworth, right? I think it was, and a red and white model. And I'd put that thing together, and I remember putting it, and man, it sat right there in my room for probably a year or two, just price, just looking at it. Man, I remember getting that. I was like, woo receiving. But there's nothing, I guarantee you, that beats giving. Now, let's read carefully, quickly, Luke chapter number 2, okay? And we'll get right here and we'll, we'll move on. Luke chapter number 2. I think this would be a familiar passage at this time of the year. I always read Luke 2 and I always read Isaiah 53 when we take the Lord's table. When I receive the bread, I muse and I think and I read Luke chapter 2. And I'm reminded how spirit became flesh and dwelt among us. And the first king-sized bed was in this manger, amen. And uh, seeing this and I read this and then when I get ready to take the juice, I read Isaiah 53 and I just dwell upon that. But here in Luke chapter 2, the Bible says, And it came to pass in those days... Verse number one, that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenus was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth unto Judea unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David. To be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife. I have to stop here every time I read that. My wife and I were in church in California with a dear assistant pastor at the time, Andy Harrell. And uh, they had his little boy, Jeffrey, who is now a, a youth pastor at his daddy's church now. And they had him come up and read the Christmas story there in Luke 2. And oh, what grade would he have been in? Third, fourth, fifth grade, something like that. And he got up to read and he was just, and he got to that verse and he goes, to be taxed with Mary, his exposed wife, being great with child. He had no idea what he said, and they all started laughing, and I always think of that when I read that for some crazy reason. But it was his espoused wife being great with child. Verse 6, and so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in the manger because... There was no room for them in the inn. Then we come to verse 8 with the shepherds, and there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not. Behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord, and this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see the thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste, quickly, and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in the manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning the child. And then the shepherds returned. If we were to go to Matthew 2, where preachers spoke from Sunday night, we'll see that, that wise men also came. And these wise men brought gifts. Wise men saw a star. The shepherds saw an angel. And uh, I think that's interesting to note there that the shepherds didn't need a star, but the wise men may have been astrologers and studiers of the stars and things of that nature, and that's what it took to draw them there. But the shepherds, godly people, would, he would believe an angel that stood before them, an angel that directed them. And as they followed and went there, and they worshiped, and they, they, they gave gifts and all that. And really, we always say, don't forget the reason of the season is Jesus' birth. And over the last few decades and even centuries, we would probably say the man in the red suit is what a lot of people associate with Christmas. Now listen, if Thursday is truly the time we remember Christ's birth, 
Think about this. Which two of these scenarios that we saw take place in front of us will you do on Christ's birthday? Think about it. I'm not trying to be Scrooge and bah humbug, but wait a minute. If we thought it was crazy for these girls to bring these gifts and exchange them with one another, some of you are sitting there going, wait a minute, it's, it's Caitlin's birthday. Well, whose birthday is it Thursday? Can I just give you this thought? I don't mean it to be irreverent at all, but Thursday, don't forget the birthday boy. Don't forget the birthday boy. It's his birthday. Hey, uh, I'm not, uh, hey, I'm at Walmart. You don't say happy holidays to me. It's Merry Christmas. Okay. As adamant as you are about that, what are you going to do on the day of his birthday? Here you go, Haley. Here you go, Savannah. Here you go, Tiffany. Yay! Oh, thank you. I got this sweater. I got this purse. I got a gift card. I got the good. And then we all leave, and, and there's the birthday boy. Man, Brother Clint, thanks a lot. Don't forget the birthday boy. A gift that we give should always be given out of love. And a gift that's given out of love should be an abundance of what's in your heart. And a gift should be given with no expectation of anything in return. If it's a true gift. For those of you who drive buses for us on Sundays, and you may bring anywhere from 15 to 45 kids, if you're going to not drive the bus because those oh, dirty rick and none of them kids said thank you, why were you doing it then in the first place? You Sunday school teachers who labor and pray and do such a great job everywhere from the nursery to Brother Jerry's class, amen, and everything in between. But mainly with those younger classes, you, many of you teachers made crafts, made gifts, gave something to your kids and Maybe only 20% of your folks in class said thank you. If that bothers you, my question is, then why'd you do it? Why do you give gifts to these families, but not these families? Hey, brother, I was just thinking about you. There you go. I don't need anything in return. Mrs. Fredericks and I have been so blessed to be a part of this church staff. And I know Preacher White would say the same thing. Y'all spoil us like crazy. We're grateful for the notes and the cards and everything, but listen, don't take this in a weird way. I'm not doing it to get that. I'm doing it because I believe God has me in Rural Hall, North Carolina for this time. And I would gladly do it. We don't mind getting the text messages, the phone calls. We want you to let us know things we can pray for you about. But as we give these gifts and gifts of love and they're from the heart and really I want to give it. And in my true meaning is to see your response when you receive it. It's sad, isn't it? We're giving Christmas gifts, but we want them to open it now, right? Because I'm not going to be at your house on Thursday, and you're not going to be at my house on Thursday. And we're all here, and it's like, here, there it is. You, you can open it now if you want. Why do we say that? Because we can't wait to see the expression that they're going to get from opening the gift that we're going to give them. What makes you think this would be any different if you brought a gift to the birthday boy? I know we're thinking, what in the world are we going to get Jesus? Remember, he doesn't need anything from us, but he wants it. I don't know all the times Mrs. Fredericks needs a hug 
or a little smooch or a little this. I don't know what time on what day it's supposed to be, but I just know that as many as them keep coming, she's all right with it. So what can we get Christ? First of all, just give him you. Give him you. And when you give him you, I'm just almost done, I'm just kind of giving thoughts here, but give him you, that, that's what he wants. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And in his giving of his son, he made it available for us to give back to him. You give him you by way of salvation. Many of us have done that in this room. Every, every Sunday, preacher asks, if you're not certain, raise your hand. Not a hand goes up. I appreciate the fact that you're saved. But then let me ask you this. Don't just give him you. How about this? Give him your best. The definition of insanity is constantly doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. Okay, so if you struggled with personal devotions this year, and let me just throw a commercial out here. The first Wednesday night in January that I'm preaching, I'm going to preach on this topic, how to walk with God. Now, it's not the save-all, catch-all for anything, and many of you have had devotions for decades, and you could out-preach the message I'm going to put together, but just some thoughts and ideas of how we could have a consistent walk with the Lord in 2015. And I'm going to speak on that on my first Wednesday in January, so I hope you be here. But, 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 but here's the deal. If you struggle with devotions in 2014, here's my question. What are you going to do differently in 2015 to fix it? Because if you just try again at the same thing that failed this year, that failed last year, that failed the year before, how do you really expect it to be a different outcome? So if you're going to give him you and give him your best, then would it make sense then? Are you having devotions at the best part of your day? Some of you aren't morning people. Some of you are night owls. Sometimes I just wake up in the morning, just kind of scroll through uh, Facebook, just see what's been going on through the night, and I see some posts by some people at 12.30 a.m., 1 a.m., 2 a.m. I'm thinking, what were they doing up? But then I think more closely, I never see a post from those people at 6.30 a.m. or 7 a.m. or 8 a.m. Maybe about 10 or 11 in the morning is when they get going, I guess. But let's be honest. Some of you aren't morning people, so why are you trying to have devotions in the morning if that's not your best time? Right? There's no sin about studying the Word of God at night if that's your best time. So instead of watching your favorite TV show, it's DVR'd anyway. You could watch it any time you want. If 9.30 p.m. is your prime time, then take that time and make sure you give God not just you, but you give Him your best. Give Him your best. I hope if you were to join the choir that you would give Him your best. And I'm just reiterating something that preacher said. Give your best would mean when Brother Roy says 415 choir practice, okay, you all could do your collective. <sighs> That's fine. But make sure you're here at 415 then. Let's give our best. If we had a church softball league and we had practice at Tuesday, you know what? You'd all be at practice. So if we could be there for church softball, we could be here for choir practice. 2015 teenagers were going with teen soul winning. Sometimes we'll go on Wednesday afternoon. Sometimes we'll go on Saturday. Let's give them our best. Well, I don't, why are you doing two different days, Brother Clint? Because some people in our public schools can't get here on a Wednesday, so I want to put them at a time on Saturday maybe where they can give their best. But there are some kids who maybe visit on a bus route. They can't go on Saturday. Maybe they can come on Wednesday. Well, I'm trying to give them an opportunity to do their best. We want to set you up for success, not failure. Do your best. So, what am I going to give God? I'm going to give God me. I'm going to give God my best. I'm going to give God my all. I'm going to give God my all. I'm going to give him my hands, my feet, my eyes, my ears, my lips. He's got me all. 
Let's make sure God has all of you. What could I give Christ on his birthday? You. Well, he already has me. All right. Maybe this is the time you give him your best. Maybe you give him your all. Is there something you're holding back that you could just do away with so God has all of you? This Thursday, just this thought. Don't forget the birthday boy. Don't forget the birthday boy. What can you give Christ on his birthday? Father in heaven, thank you so much for your Bible and how it reminds us here in Luke chapter 2 that this is the birth of your son. And God, with that in mind, I pray that Thursday, I am not in any way, shape, or form minimizing for those who've already bought gifts for family members and friends and they're going to give them to them. And Lord, would you just keep in our minds the birthday boy. That individual who chose to leave heaven and take on flesh took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of man who was tempted in all manner like we yet without sin. For 30 years he lived on this earth, confounded the doctors, confused the teachers, totally messed up the minds of the religious leaders. And for the next three years of his life, devoted to one thing, a cross. And as he paid that ultimate price of death, he made a way of escape from hell for us. Lord, may we not forget the birthday boy this Thursday. And so maybe as a result of that, God, there might be someone here who says, you know what? I need to give him my best. 2015, I'm going to give him my all, which means I'm not just going to find an area to serve. I'm going to serve with a good spirit. I'm going to serve with love. I'm going to serve out of a heart that says I want to. I'm going to serve without expecting anything in return. I just want to serve my best, my all. Help us, Father, is my prayer. I ask these things in the strong name of Jesus. Amen. Let's all stay into our feet, heads bowed, eyes closed. I'm just going to have Miss Carla play something. And maybe you're here tonight and you'd say, you know what? I don't want to forget Christ on that birthday. Hey, it's Christmas. I understand that. Hey, it's jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Hey, I know that. But it's also a way in a manger. It's also silent night, holy night. Maybe you're here tonight and say, this year I need to come forward and say, God, you're getting my best starting Thursday. Maybe starting tonight. God, not only are you getting my best, you're getting my all. And my all includes me. It includes my spouse. It includes my children, God. Take what you want. We're all yours in 2015. But would there be someone here tonight who say, Brother Clint, I don't know if he even has me. But as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God. If you have him, you're his son. Is there anybody here who'd say, Brother Clint, I don't know that for sure. I need to get that taken care of. I'd invite you to come down here and Brother Jerry or myself would gladly take a Bible and show you how you can know that for sure. What can I give Jesus on his birthday? You can give him you. You can give him your best. You can give him Pastor White here. I want to thank you for tuning in to our live stream today. Uh, Whether you watched it live or on YouTube uh, or maybe an archived sermon, thank you so much for taking the time to do so. 
And I want to conclude the message today by telling you a few things uh, about how God feels about you and us in general. First of all, I want you to know today, if you're listening, God loves you. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And that means you, friend. And so I want you to know today God loves you. The second thing I want you to know is that all of us are sinners. We've all missed the mark. The Bible says in Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We've all missed the mark, every one of us. The Bible also says in Romans chapter 5, verse 8, But God commended this love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And then in Romans 10, 13, the Bible says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I want to encourage you today, friend. There is hope for you. There's hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you'd like to talk to someone about trusting Christ as your Savior, you can do so. You can reach us at the church here at area code 336-969-6937. Or you can reach us on our website at freedombaptistrh.com where we'll have more information about salvation. And we'd love for you to let us know of your decision for Jesus Christ today. If you need prayer, if you need encouragement, please don't hesitate to call or email or visit our website. And we trust that you'll find the help needed in the Lord Jesus Christ. May you have a wonderful day. And may God bless you. Thank you again for listening to our broadcast.